Hello, Michael. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation of Tai Chi International. Now I know you're a talented and popular martial artist. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, so um, my name is Michael and I've been on my martial arts journey since 2008. Uh, at the age of 20, 24 was when I got started. And I think about five years ago or something, I started sharing my passion for martial arts online. And especially with the platform YouTube, I've been able to reach millions of people, um, especially with a few viral videos in particular. And it, that has been a gift because I always try to be a role model and try and share some positivity, not just the uh, combative skills. I think you have succeed, a success, successful, uh, you have succeeded. And uh, now you're very popular. Uh, most many people, they know you. And uh, tell us a little bit about uh, martial, your martial art activities. Do you also teach Kung Fu? Um, I have in a few, in some, situations in the past but not currently so i used to train at a kun where i trained for nine or ten years and part of it was when you were like a higher advanced level student you started to teach so i was part of the instructor team at around before becoming a brown belt actually and then eventually a a black sash. Um, so I was teaching there along with the other high level students and oh. I've also done some stuff for charity with teaching. Um, I uh, started a small scale charity project with my girlfriend called Mogan, Project Mogan and uh, we try to offer some training opportunities for people who would either not be able to afford it or get something specially suited for their needs like physical or mental disabilities or just difficult social circumstances. And, and that thing is not that active right now because I have a baby son and life's been very hectic, but definitely plan on going back to that in the future. Oh, wonderful. So you volunteering for the community, you support the community, you organize a charity. That's very nice. And yep. uh, I would like to ask, could you tell us a little bit about your martial arts style, your Kung Fu style? Yeah, so uh, the foundation for me is uh, Meishu Kung Fu, which is uh -huh. what I started out with. And you probably haven't heard of it like... Most people tend to have heard of it referenced by myself, actually, because it was a system started here in Denmark by my Shifu in the 80s. Now he trained some Shaolin Kung Fu and a bit of Wing Chun and also just sparred with people from different styles. And he tried to find a balance between efficiency and the art of combat. And it has some animal styles. It has like the eagle claw or yeah. eagle talon, uh, and it has also the snake fist and the tiger claw and the crane and even some praying mantis. But it's a system I enjoy training because we perform taolu, which is similar to kata. I know you're sensei in karate. And we also did a lot of sparring, which from my understanding is not that common uh, in a lot of Kung Fu schools. So I enjoyed it. But at the same time, I think the way I've been able to use it under pressure, as you can see in some of my videos, oops, <laughs> we had a black. Um, I think that's partially from the training at that club because there was an emphasis on sparring, but it was with a limited rule set and at times not that hard contact so it's also at times from what i've done on my own on my journey and then i eventually stopped training that to be able to train krav maga for specifically focusing on self-defense and i stopped with that after a while to train some mma especially learning the ground game 
some Noki Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was an eye opener for me. Yeah, so my background is a mix of all of these things. Oh, wonderful. Do you plan in the future to open your own school to teach in an organized manner? Um, I might. That's definitely something I've considered. And I think perhaps if I move out of the city so I can afford more, then perhaps I'll take the chance of doing that because there's not a lot of income as an instructor in most countries, not here in Denmark either. And I would also like to be able to offer free classes for like homeless people or people in dire circumstances. And to be able to do that, it would have to be if I moved out of the city so I had lesser expenses. It might happen, who knows, we'll see. Excellent. Now I would like to ask you about the benefits of this practice and even on different levels like physical, mental, spiritual. Could you tell us a little bit? Uh, what did you experience? Uh, how did this help you? Yeah, uh, martial arts has made a tremendous impact in my life. Uh, so um, I think especially um, the, perhaps the biggest thing is just learning if you apply yourself and work really hard towards something, then you can change your life. Be it in terms of martial arts skill level, where I started out with like a complete beginner and yeah, no skills to speak of. Uh, but also just as well in terms of discipline and just finding out how you can set a goal and work towards it and gradually get there. That's been a huge impact in my life and that's also part of the reason why I want to share the martial arts with more people so they can find for themselves. Then beyond that, there's of course the self-defense aspect, which is there's a lot which goes into that besides the actual fighting as I'm sure you're aware of. So situational awareness and like the ability to utilize your environment, identify improvised weapons, finding the exit routes and just knowing how to handle yourself in a situation. That's a huge benefit because I think I was just listening to the Master One podcast and it's an awesome guest. He's had a definite impact in martial arts. But while I largely agree with what he said about um, in terms of if you know, if you're not looking for trouble, you won't find it. I don't fully agree because I know it can still happen at times. And I've had a few encounters in my life. Like at one point, someone actually tried to drive away with my girlfriend and uh, where I got into the car and the guy, the driver left the scene, thankfully. But had he not done that, it would have gotten into a dangerous situation and with combat and you never know what can happen. So it's best to be prepared. So that's also a benefit. So the confidence, the self-defense skills, and then also just having fun like just the joy of movement, I think that, uh, yeah. I and, think and that, building yeah. this kind of confidence allows you to control a certain situation in a certain manner, to be master of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, and, and it's, it's kind of fun, a funny thing because in, I'm a lot more confident in all areas of my life after having started martial arts, but I'm not as confident. It was a fake sort of confidence. Uh, I'm not as confident as I was in the beginning in terms of defending myself. Because at first, when I saw some progress and was able to do a few high kicks, I thought I was the man. And I thought mm -hmm. I could, I actually wanted to get into a bad situation just so I can prove it to the world. and. Looking back at it, that was such a dumb mindset. Because no, now, I think if you're training and really testing yourself, you'll both find that there's a lot of people you can defeat in sparring or in actual fights or whatever it is. But 
you'll also encounter a lot of people who can kick your ass. And I definitely encountered a lot of that. <laughs> and also getting to know more about like the self-defense context, which is so different from combat sports or martial arts. There's just so much which could go wrong. Like you might, uh, you might uh, handle two attackers or something and We have a small pause. Um, it could be something like yeah. some glass on the ground or something you didn't even notice. So, yeah. Yes, something uh, unpredictable can happen. That's true. But uh, let's come back to our uh, subjects. And uh, you are saying about the society, evolving into society. What do you think uh, martial arts can change in a new society? What is the positive impact of martial arts? nowadays even on a new generation yeah i, I think um, it's also a great way to get out aggression and i think that's definitely helpful especially with the youths who are often faced with struggles and if they become too frustrated sometimes they'll act out and either they'll be uh, victims of violence um, or perhaps they'll just ruin their lives because they didn't have a hard training session that day and they just flipped out in some situation. So, so that's one thing for sure. As and, you were saying, discipline. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, uh, just also just meeting so many different people in one place, people from all walks of life are attracted to martial arts and the more you hang around different kinds of people, the more you realize that in some ways we're all the same, I think. And I that's think that's true. Yeah. It's the same life very, energy that yeah. connects us. Yeah. And I hope the internet connection is okay. But uh, it's, it's good. Okay, that's good. Yeah. And um, you see also you mentioned about connection. I think uh, martial arts can help people connect also spiritually. Martial art is not just a form of exercise. I think it's much more than that. What do you think? What's your opinion? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, um, there's definitely, like, even when you're training in a room with others and you're all working towards a goal, there's like a, spiritual connection in a sense but you all have this focus and also when you're training on your own and you're just focused on how your body's moving and visualizing an opponent perhaps or whatever it might be yeah i think and also like just the tradition and how you ritualize a lot of things it it really puts that emphasis and focus on the present moment so it's definitely a spiritual thing for me as well yeah that's that's true yes i, I have experienced the same thing as well several times and i would like to ask you do you have some memorable moments uh, about your martial art activity could you tell us some stories uh yeah there's there's quite a few um but yeah one of the moments i remember <laughs> Would be, uh, when I went to Italy uh, in Napoli and I met up with this guy Cristiano Di Simone who's a Sifu and uh, we did some uh, full contact weapon sparring and it was the first time I was uh, faced with a, an opponent with a wooden trident and I was wearing like a fencing mask and it was quite intimidating so when he stung me and it hit the face. I was protected by the mask, but it was just this metally sound. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, wow. that, that was definitely a, a cool moment. And also on that trip, I was nominated for an award, with, which was kind of a surreal moment because especially at that point, my channel was much smaller and still uh, outside of the YouTube scene, I'm not that known, but I think he he had some connections in Italy and somehow I was nominated and I got up on stage and showed my Sin Dragon shirt and it was a cool moment. Uh, oh. sure. 
and wonderful yeah, yeah and then also like early on um, training martial arts with a homeless guy who was selling uh, newspapers uh, I just met him and it was a, at a point in my journey where I was very inspired to share my passion because I just started the, the project Send Dragon and sharing it on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and so I trained with this guy for like a month or so and he, uh, he was a great friendly guy and I tried to keep it very simple and self-defense focused and I of course I was thinking as well this might be a very inspiring video to share with others and both to inspire people to try and help others but also to inspire people who feel they might not be in a position to learn martial arts that they could so i asked this guy would it be okay to do some kind of video put you on camera and he didn't want to and i respected that and then at some point during our training he'd actually gotten quite a bit better and so this kid walked by with a cell phone and I asked if we could, uh, if he could uh, do a recording just briefly, just to show the homeless guy how how cool it actually looked, the techniques I taught him. And then the homeless guy liked it, and he said that it was okay for me to share in a video. It's also on my channel, one of the oldest videos, and that's just a great memory. I have to see it. I have to see it. Oh, wonderful! This is and quite a story. Yes, I, I can feel and uh, I think we all agree that your passion materializes. You have such a positive energy and that attracts a lot of people's attention. Thanks, thanks. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you as well, I, I've looked a bit at, on your channel and I really like how you're connecting with different martial artists like the Master Wong episode and I know there's quite a few others which I'll check out and also some of your self-defense stuff. Like, it's so cool to uh, see you teach the skills you've learned. So, yeah. Oh, thank you, you're very kind. And Michael, I would like to ask you, how can people find you? How can they contact you? Well, uh, you can uh, message me on Instagram if you use that, Send Dragon uh, Martial Arts, or you can, uh, go to the Send Dragon uh, Facebook page. You can even add me on Facebook, but just know that there's a good chance I won't be able to respond to the comments because that's one of the most challenging things as my audience has expanded is to respond. And I primarily respond to YouTube comments. Um, but if you want to add me on Facebook, it's uh, Michael Philip Gottlieb. I guess it'll be in the description perhaps. Um, and of course my YouTube channel, which is where I honestly share the best content I create. Uh, so just send oh, Dragon on mainly YouTube. Mainly for the people, they can find you through the YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. and, and to catch the content both for me and for your content as well, it's important to subscribe and hit the bell icon for post notifications as well. Yeah. 